about where we were coming out of 2001 and where we are today, you can't help but say the plan worked. Cutting taxes helped stimulate economic growth. We start 2009 in the midst of a crisis unlike any we have seen in our lifetime, a crisis that has only deepened over the last few weeks. Nearly 2 million jobs have been now lost. And on Friday, we're likely to learn that we lost more jobs last year than at any time since World War II. Welcome back. I'm glad you could make it. I hate to say it. The beginning of the new year seemed like a continuation and part of the 2008 disaster news. Businesses consider bankruptcy, states are out of money and cut back on law enforcement and education, car makers can sell their products, in short, the layoffs have it. While the picture gets dimmer and dimmer, the Neanderthal economists in Area 51, Washington DC, announce that they will do anything to delay the passing of a stimulus package with minor and mostly irrelevant arguments. Indeed, instead of concentrating on securing immediate stimulation, a core fundamental in Recession Economics 101, they rather concentrate on not seating a senator who has been appointed by a governor who has not been impeached, who has not been indicted, and where the prosecutor does not even have a case to obtain an indictment, but hopes he will so in three months. Maybe. The argument the Secretary of State has the power to rescind the action of a properly sitting governor. Harry Reid initially went along with that argument. Harry, I found a piece of ancient Chinese advice. If you put a match between your legs, your chestnuts will be roasted. Same with Obama. Obviously puzzled by Patrick Fitzgerald, the quick mouth prosecutor, Obama said in a press conference. I hope that the governor himself comes to the conclusion that he can no longer effectively serve uh, and that he does resign. Obama-san, sorry, that was Japanese. He is another piece of ancient Chinese wisdom. If you tempt a squirrel with a nut, be prepared to be bitten. I don't make this up. That's from fortune cookies. Sure enough, Blago Goldfinger appointed Ronald Burris as the senator from Illinois, which got everybody upset. Let me say this again. Either we have a law or we don't. The fact remains that Blagojevich has neither been impeached nor even indicted. Do any of them notice that uh that this man, Rod Blagojevich, has not even been indicted, let alone convicted of anything. And indeed, the prosecutor is now saying he needs more time to, to get together an indictment. And why does he need the more time? Well, he says he's drowning in new evidence. Prosecutors normally don't postpone indictment because they have too much evidence. Back to the Neanderthal economists' objection to Obama's stimulus. The argument, you the taxpayer will have to pay for the stimulus. Not quite entirely. What these enemies of the public do not tell you is what you will have to pay if no stimulus passes, and that may include homelessness. If you think I am kidding, you do so at your own risk. Not only are states laying off public employees, cutting back on law enforcement as well as on teachers, they have no money for welfare. I agree with Paul Krugman, the 2008 Nobel Prize winner for economics. In a recession, government action has to be taken swiftly and to the extent needed. What about the $500 billion economic stimulus plan that President-elect Obama is planning? Do you think it's realistic to, to get that done in two years? Uh, I hope it can get done faster. My, the back of my envelope says we need $600 billion next year alone. So I'm actually worried that this plan may be too small. I mean, this is an enormous crisis. You've got to hit it with an enormous uh, stimulus to buck the economy up. Um, I, I'm still worrying that they're going to be a little bit short, because you just have to put all your notions of what is prudent aside. Being cautious is actually a very foolish thing right now. I also agree with Krugman that Obama's plan may not be bold enough. 
If we handle this well, some of the response will involve aid to education. Allow me to call the Mythbusters in to explain again, and maybe in more detail, why we need to take swift action, what the macroeconomic relationships are, and why, as much as you may hate them, taxes are needed not only to pay for essential services like security, education and health, but to pay for measures that are needed to prevent a true economic disaster. The gross domestic product, GDP for short, is the measure currently in use to judge the economic health of a nation. Next, you remember the donut, which is the essence of macroeconomy, as much as this may make the cave age economists cringe. The donut describes not only the relationship between the players, but nicely depicts the monetary flow. As well as in a recession or depression. and on a global level. Not to forget the government, which is a major contributor to the economic health. Let's forget for a moment the government's contribution to the economy via its employees and come right to the point of economic stimulus. Here one given to corporations. Macroeconomists say that this will increase employment, which in turn will increase purchase power, which in turn will increase buying and added tax revenues. Except that if it comes to increase the purchase power of consumers, there is a delay caused by the corporate go-between. Unless there are compelling reasons, for example to save banks or car makers, much more efficient would be to apply the stimulus directly to the consumer. Of course, that is only true if the consumer actually spends the money he gets and does not use it to pay off debt. Let's look for a moment at the government's contribution to the economy, typically overlooked by the Neanderthalers. Indeed, if you look closer, you will see that the government does not put the money in its savings account, that would be the day, but actually spends it by paying public servants like firemen, police, teachers, etc. So the next time some cave age economist, the Hoover crowd, comes and gives you stories, give them the bleeper. One more point though. Any stimulus plan would have a greater chance of success if it is combined with a bold plan to encourage innovation. That of course would require that we get our credit house in order and make credit available to venture capitalists. It would also require that we change the patent laws to exclude patents that are being used to restrain the trade. Such inventions and patents do not contribute to the economy, to the contrary. Okay then, here is my recommendation for your personal stimulus package. See you soon. May the pennies be with you.